Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, one step closer to reaching herd immunity. Thinking that it's time for everyone to do their part. It's selfish not to. How soon your kids can get in line for the shot. A state of emergency that starts at the pump. The pipeline hack impact and what you need to know before you fill up. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Lindsay Ward. I'm John Carlin. Kids as young as 12 could be getting the COVID-19 vaccine now in just a matter of days. As we reported as breaking news yesterday at 6, the FDA gave Pfizer shot the green light for kids ages 12 to 15, but it still needs approval from the CDC. 10 News reporter Jessica Jewell joins us now live in Roanoke. So Jessica, what's next in this process here in our area? There are a couple more hoops to jump through, including that CDC approval, then approval from VDH. But planning is already underway between the local health district and schools, and parents are getting ready for their kids to start rolling up their sleeves. I would like to see how it starts out. Jennifer Flora's two children are many years away from vaccine eligibility at this point, but her mind is already made up. Um, I would get them vaccinated. For sure. Do you have any Mommy. concerns about it? Um, I have more concerns about them getting sick than I do the vaccination. Parents and grandparents. I want it approved for everybody as soon as possible. Sharing similar sentiments. Thinking that it's time for everyone to do their part. And it's selfish not to. Puts other people at risk. The FDA's approval Monday puts 12 to 15 year olds one step closer to getting their vaccine, something local health district director Dr. Cynthia Morrow says might be a challenge given what they've seen with clinics for ages 16 and older so far. The uptake at our school sponsored um, vaccine clinics has not been as robust as we were hopeful. Still, though, planning is already underway to move younger students into those clinics. We're trying to make it as convenient as possible. We want to do everything in our power um, to optimize our vaccine rates. The easiest way to do that may be at school. So they're making a push to get students vaccinated before summer and allowing parents to give consent electronically so they don't have to be present for their child's appointment. More vaccines, hopefully leading to a more normal life for children next school year. We just have to do it. It's been a long year. We've all worked hard. And we need to finish it off. The challenge with those school clinics will be getting students in for both doses as the school year is winding down. But at this point, local doctors offices and pharmacies should have plenty of supply. Live in Roanoke, I'm Jessica Jewell, 10 News working for you. Well, just one state over seems like this of a fuel frenzy are becoming more and more common. And even here at home, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam is issuing a state of emergency because the Commonwealth could see a gas shortage. This comes the day after hackers shut down the Colonial Pipeline all along the East Coast. 10 News reporter Tim Harfin is live in Campbell County tonight. Tim, many are still able to fill up right now. You haven't seen any long lines out today. That's right, John. I'm going to step out of the way. You can see behind me, it's pretty empty right now. There was a short wait during rush hour, but honestly, this is what most places we've seen in Lynchburg and Campbell County have looked like today. Uh, gas station managers we spoke with say they have enough gasoline for now, but there's still some concern from both managers and motorists that there could be a, a shortage. Now, a AAA spokesperson says the longer the Colonial Pipeline outage continues, the greater the impact it could have on state running out of fuel and those stations that have gas might sell it at a higher price because of demand. Virginia faced a three cent increase overnight and it's expected to climb. AAA asks motorists to be prepared, not panic, and recommend you fill up once your vehicle reaches a quarter of a tank. If they're panic buying gas every time they're out, refilling as quickly as possible, that's going to create artificial demand and that's going to cause problems down the road. Some gas stations we went to today in Lynchburg and Campbell County say so far they haven't had any issues, but wouldn't be surprised if that changes now here at the Sitco station on Timberlake Road. The manager tells us that he tried to order premium and diesel gas yesterday. He expected a delivery today and it never showed up. Live tonight in Campbell County, Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. 
We saw another nice day outside today and this afternoon was a similar feel, but a bit cooler than yesterday. A beautiful sunset there. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz joins us now. So Jeff, even more of a temperature drop to come. Yeah, we could have some very chilly nights ahead Thursday morning and Friday morning. It is not out of the realm of possibility for some of us to wake up to some patchy frost. I want to show you though that tonight for the home opener for the Salem Red Sox, the battle of 460 as they battle the Lynchburg Hillcats, the weather is going to cooperate beautifully. First pitch temperature likely around 66, falling to around 59 by around the ninth inning. Satellite radar composite showing that we do have a couple of showers south of us, a couple more well north of us. We're in between. And although we're going to start to uh, see more clouds moving in later tonight, tonight looks to be for the most part dry until about 4 or 5 a.m. where we may start to see a little bit of rain pushing in. Your Wednesday planner showing the chance for a couple of showers mainly south of 460, say through midday tomorrow. Once we get into tomorrow afternoon, any clouds around will start to break up. Simply put, tomorrow looks to be a day where we're going to have more sunshine north and more clouds to the south. Temperatures start out in the upper 40s to near 50, with highs only in the middle 60s. Now, as we uh, look ahead, we're looking at a frost potential again Thursday morning and Friday morning. That tells you that some folks will get down into the 30s here as we head into Thursday morning and Friday morning. But a nice warm-up is in store for the weekend and beyond. We'll show you the numbers coming up in just a bit. John. Right now, the votes are still being counted for who will be re the uh, Republicans pick for Virginia's lieutenant governor. It's down to these two people, Winsome Sears and Tim Hugo. But as 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett shows us, just one day after Glenn Youngkin won the gubernatorial spot, he's already getting support from the top of the party. The Republican Party of Virginia has selected its candidate for governor, Glenn Youngkin. He promises to use his business experience to bring change to Richmond. I'm so humbled today to have accepted this nomination, to be ready, in fact, to serve and prepared to lead and get Virginia back to where she belongs as the best state in America to live and work and raise a family. Tuesday, Youngkin won the support of former President Donald Trump. I'm honored to receive his endorsement. 10 News political analyst Ed Lynch says Youngkin is still the underdog in the blue state, but has some advantages. He's got substantial campaign funding, he's a political outsider, and did not attack his Republican opponents. And most times, the party not in the White House wins that election for governor. Susan Swecker, the chair of the Democratic Party of Virginia, says Youngkin is the wrong choice for the Commonwealth. So we have a very positive message that we are going to run on, but make no mistake about it, we are going to point out every step of the way the right-wing extremism of Glenn Youngkin. It'll be up to Democratic voters to decide who will battle it out against Youngkin at the ballot box. Lindsey Kennett, 10 News, working for you. And by the way, these are the Democratic candidates who are vying for your vote. Former state delegate Jennifer Carroll Foy, state delegate Lee Carter, current lieutenant governor Justin Fairfax, of course, former governor Terry McAuliffe, and state senator Jennifer McClellan. That primary is coming up on June 8th. New tonight at 6, it's the end of an era for Wythe County. The sheriff who has served the community for nearly 40 years is retiring. Keith Dunnigan says his final day at the department will be August the 1st. He says it was a difficult decision, but he wants to spend more time with family and friends. While he's done many things in his career, he says he's most proud of how the county improved school safety. A place to lean on each other after a major life change. The trauma group that continues far beyond your hospital stay. And here's a live look from the Salem Red Sox Stadium. Up ahead in sports, we'll show you what's in store for the future of this team. Our local hospitals help people heal from all kinds of injuries. But Carillion is working to help survivors of life-altering traumas even after they're discharged. Carillion's Trauma Services is teaming up with the Trauma Survivor Network. The goal is to help former patients and their caretakers connect and find their new normal. Connecting other people that have had similar experiences so that they can share their experiences and share what they've learned. To bring even more people together, they're hosting a virtual race to rebuild. This weekend, some of those survivors are starting the race together on Saturday. The Star City is the spotlight, and one business is setting the stage. Ah, where you can catch the Grandin debut. 
And you are looking at a live picture from our poor mountain sky cam. A couple of clouds around, no doubt, but our fair share of blue skies too. I will let you know when temperatures will start to warm back up and when you may need the umbrella in spots coming up in your forecast. New to 9 and 6, a Roanoke business is making its claim to fame. The Great Goose, it's a home decor shop in Grandin Village, will be featured in a Lifetime movie. The movie's director is a Roanoke native and approached the store's owner about using it as a backdrop. So the shop closed down for a bit on Sunday while the crews filmed and the store owner and her daughter were even featured as extras. It was just a joy. It was exciting to see what all goes on. They used a fog machine in here and and dimmed my lights with some paper on the windows. And it, it was just a really a fun learning experience. Other businesses in Grandin will also make appearances. The movie doesn't have an official name just yet, but it should be on Lifetime as soon as the end of next year. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Hi there, friends. I'm meteorologist Jeff Hanowich. The land of the midnight sun. You got it. The town formerly known as Barrow. Well, the sun won't set until August the 2nd. So you know when this happens, when Alaska really doesn't see any darkness at all for a couple of months, we're getting very close to summer. And of course, the sun's direct rays are moving further to the north, which allows for Alaska to not get dark until early August again. All right, so the radar showing that we are dry here locally. Great news for the big baseball game going on in Salem this evening. The home opener for the Red Sox as they battle the Hillcats. Nothing to worry about this evening. We're going to start to see clouds rolling in, though, as we head into later tonight after midnight. Could have a few showers towards the New River Valley Mountain Empire late tonight. Better chances for a couple more showers here as we head right along the North Carolina Virginia border as we head into Wednesday. But without question, the bulk of the rain on Wednesday going to stay south of us towards the Carolinas. And as we continue to go through time, <laughs> this front that moves through here or actually goes to the south of us is going to usher in some more chilly air. A reinforcing shot of cold air is coming at us from the north. So we are looking to stay very cool here as we head for the remainder of the work week. Now, now, as far as how much rainfall we see, it's not going to be much. OK, areas say uh, south of 460 could see maybe up to a 10. So this is going to be a huge rainmaker for us. Keep in mind, any rain we get tomorrow will be beneficial. We need the rain across the region as we just haven't seen a whole lot of it. We look dry on Thursday and then we could have some isolated rain chances Friday, Saturday and Sunday. But more of us will stay dry than get wet those days. 56 right now in Hot Springs, 72 Roanoke, mid to upper 60s out across South Side, 61 Hillsville and Galax, 62 in Withville. Feeling like March again on Wednesday. We're forecasting highs between 59 and 64 degrees. Keep in mind the average high at this time of year ranges between 71 and 77, and it just does not look as though we're going to get there as we head into tomorrow. Temperatures tomorrow 10 to 15 degrees below average. The first 90 degree day before May the 15th. How often does it happen? Well, it happens about half the time in the Highlands, Lynchburg and Roanoke Valley. Happens a little more than half the time in Southside hardly ever happens across the New River Valley. So basically, uh, we're supposed to not get too terribly hot before May the 15th, but it's really after May the 15th when we really start to crank up the heat around here. For tonight, partly to at times mostly cloudy. Partly cloudy this evening, mostly cloudy after midnight. Few showers possible late towards the New River Valley and Mountain Empire. Lows tonight, 40 to 50. For tomorrow, we're cool after some morning showers south of the Roanoke Valley, south of Highway 460. Highs in the mountains tomorrow, 57 to 63. Outside the mountains, 62 to 67. Your extended forecast showing temperatures here in the 60s as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Middle 70s, Saturday, and Sunday. Mid to upper 70s, some of us close to 80 by early next week. Next week, also will have a better chance for some hit or miss thunder showers. The warmer you are, the more unstable you become. Happy? All right, Jeff, we've got a live report on the way from Salem where the Red Sox are ready to raise the curtain on their long awaited return home. All right, this was like waiting for Christmas and then having it moved to March like a year later. Tonight, it's Salem's turn to welcome baseball back. And 10 Sports' Eric Johnson is our own Chris Kringle tonight. He's standing by as the Red Sox and the Hillcats get set to do battle. So the rivalry remains even if the league is different. Eric, take it away. 
That's exactly right, Appy. You know, the Red Sox and Hillcats may be the low A affiliates of their respective ball clubs now, but as they both proved in the opening week of action, much like the fans that are here to stay, so is the will to win. There's some teams that shuffled around, you know, so uh, having Pepe, you know, who a hitting coach who's been around the league for a little bit, it helps me out a lot knowing these ballparks and, and maybe knowing some of these clubs a little bit, but it's new to all of us. You know, it's new to, to here in Salem Red Sox for being a low A club now. So, you know, I don't think these guys look at it like that. They just they wake up, they're ready to play baseball and get after it each and every day. And it all starts with the preparation and approach for a young group of players eager to get a crack at the bat. Getting better every day before games is more of an individual aspect, working on individual aspects of your game, whether it's offense, defense, uh, your mentality. And then when the lights come on, when we cross that diamond, it's all about the team. That's something the Hillcats know all about, sweeping Fredericksburg in its first series of the season, outscoring the Nationals 55-15, to including nine home runs. And with the budding talent both teams offer, the next six nights should be exciting in Salem as both squads not only go for wins, but understanding of the game they love. We're becoming big leaguers here, you know, so um, just helping those guys with ins and outs of what it's like. You know, it's not just pitching, it's not just hitting, but what it's like to, to, to actually wake up every day and, and be a big league professional baseball player. And of course, as you would imagine during the pandemic, a lot of these guys simply didn't get the opportunity to play the game that they love. So you can just imagine all of the work that went into building these guys up, not only physically, but mentally as well. First pitch coming up tonight at 7.05 p.m. Highlights coming up tonight on 10 Sports at 11. But for now, we're live in Salem. Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. All right, Eric, we'll look forward to highlights tonight. Meantime, an agreement was reached. And Medina Spirit will race in the second leg of the Triple Crown Saturday's Preakness Stakes. Did I mention coverage begins 2 p.m. on NBCSN, moves over to WSLS 10 at 5 on Saturday. Now you know, news and notes for you. The Yankees coaching staff is COVID positive. Game tonight at Tampa still on. They have a manager. They're just missing a bunch of coaches. Keely Richard, the former War Hill star pitcher, now ACC pitcher of the year for the Hokies. And the A's have been directed by Major League Baseball to explore other markets. Keep that in mind and back to you guys. Okay, right. lots to think about there. Thank you, Abby. NBC Nightly News is coming up next. And we'll see you back here at 7.